Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff and as always I also publish on Rumble uh, on the blogger as an archive post thing and on Patreon for access support and any kind of updates I uh, will usually do on the Twitter X platform there um, later today we will get uh, another Prey episode from the from that gameplay series. Uh, yesterday I managed to finally uh, upload the uh, second VOD uh, episode from Sunday, I think. And I think the third one is still trying to um, do the, the thing on YouTube, the, the processing for 4K. Uh, when it's ready, I, I will uh, publish. Uh, this, I don't have a, a, a schedule for this once I just, after the, the live streams, I, uh, as soon as I can, I try to edit out the breaks and the, the beginning and the end of the of the stream and then just uh, go through and, and upload to YouTube. Um, again, uh, yesterday I was almost about to, uh, I was not uh, uh, certain, but uh, I, I teased out that I could do some live streaming but uh, yeah uh, some stuff happened uh, some work like la last minute thing happened and i didn't manage to to get around and do some live stream uh, that's why i it's one of the reasons that i cannot commit to a, a, a schedule regarding live streams yet uh, but uh, yeah uh, i will focus my efforts on the, the on the weekends uh, between Saturday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, but I cannot promise anything. Um, and but yeah, the rest uh, so far so good. I can manage to do uh, all the, the the launches of the gameplay series that I've been doing uh, also, which is Jedi Fallen Order and uh, Mutant Year Zero: Road to Eden. Um, yeah, live streams is the only thing that it's a, a question mark uh, in terms of uh, fixed schedules. But yeah, um, I've, I, I I really need and want to to go about the elden ring to continue the that journey it's been very interesting um it, interestingly enough I, I mentioned in the live stream um it, it's my first time like just playing uh, like the full thing uh, in terms of soft from software games with uh, especially with online uh, component there usually i play always offline uh, i play dark souls offline um it's more challenging uh, and it it confirms to me that effectively all from software games have an easy mode which is playing with uh taking uh help from other players with the asynchronous multiplayer which is something very interesting is the mostly the the the, the multiplayer games that i like have maximum uh, of a, a synchronous multiplayer more than that it's uh, it's too much for me it's when it starts getting very competitive i don't have I'm too old for that stuff now. Uh, I go. I like to go things at my own pace. And I don't want to be pressured to play a game. Uh, the other, uh, how the the others play. So that's why I. I it's my <laughs> my cap is a synchronous multiplayer. Uh, but yeah, um, when I can, I, I will do it. And, and of course, Death Stranding also has those components. Uh, and I will again. Uh, I will switch between uh, these two games, but uh, my main focus at the moment is Elden Ring, so I really want to at least do a gameplay, uh, which, uh, if not by the end, at least have almost reaching uh, NG+, plus, New Game+, plus, uh, so I can be kind of ready for the DLC, but yeah, no news regarding that yet. Um, yeah, I think uh, regarding the channel, it's everything that I got here for at the moment. Let's go to the news. Um, I didn't notice this, uh, mainly because I don't usually do very competitive gaming, uh, especially multiplayer, as I mentioned. Um, seems that uh, at the driver level, anti-lag plus is disabled from AMD, uh, um, mainly because uh, I, I saw this here and there, but because it doesn't affect me, I, I really didn't pay too much attention, but uh, similarly, it uh, the, the technology itself uh, had, had some issues with some anti-cheating uh, things regarding multiplayer, like Call of Duties and and Counter Strikes and all that jazz. That um, because it's an anti-lag, so supposedly it improves the lag on your own system. It um, and, and I think it's because it's not um, injected in the game itself because it's a driver level driver level stuff. 
the anti-cheat might detect that as a kind of a cheat because it's running outside of the game itself and a lot of people were banned or banned or at least um, yeah banned they basically temporarily banned but it's a ban nonetheless um, and yeah at the moment in at this moment in time they, they just disabled that option you have the anti-lag the normal one uh, it's there uh, after uh, I, I really checked this uh, and it's still there the anti-lag the normal one this anti-lag plus is like something uh, to be basically is activated uh, when you put AFMF which is the fake frame rates or the FSR stuff there um, yeah uh, basically uh, at this moment in time uh, they are working on it supposedly Frank Azor which is one of those guys that is on the driver's side there uh, said it supposedly will come soon so they are working I don't know if they are working with the, the gaming industry or the, the, the publishers I don't know to or the, um, to do something that to whitelist uh, this kind of thing I don't know how, how this is going to be done but for sure they will have more news regarding that when it, when it come back maybe they will give an explanation what they did um, if it was something at the driver level or something that it had to do with the with the publishers so they can whitelist um, the driver itself and the, and the technologies associated with it uh, but yeah it, at the moment it's disabled um, we got also some stabilization especially on the 4090s prices again the 4090 is like a halo product it's something that still at this moment in time goes around around two thousand dollars which is insane you can build 4k systems for two thousand dollars like complete systems with monitor and everything um but yet yeah, uh, mainly because of the though like the 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 the, the, the oh my god um, i'm forgetting words the export restrictions uh, basically the ban on selling 4090s because of the it exceeded the, that threshold in, in terms of computing power um and because there was a date limit uh, basically nvidia was pushing everything there on the chinese market and then that uh, retracted from other places other markets the in terms of stock availability and of course that jump up the price of the 1490 uh, itself uh, and then they introduced the 1490d uh, specifically just for the chinese version i suppose they had to ramp up a little bit in that production again the 1490d is not a good gpu in the sense that it basically costs the same thing that a normal 1490 and basically the 1490 is blocked on any kind of uh, of supporting any kind of um, uplift in terms of performance um, oh my god i'm today i'm a little bit foggy on the head trying to get the the, the, the precise words that i want to uh, to bring up uh, but yeah you cannot overclock that's the word that i was looking for uh, so it's a locked uh, GPU there um, but yeah this February seems to like stabilizing and dropping a little easy bit here but it's not that much this again uh, I think this will not influence by any means um, at least that I can see the 7900 XTX and the 4080 super pricing there um, the 4080 is more about um, uh, about stock uh, because it sold pretty well when it launched uh, and then the, the stock dried up too quickly um, and of course less stock uh, then the, the 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 sellers can push a little bit more of the price but uh, it's not that much above the msrp at the moment in time the 4080 super um the only thing that i think the 7900 xtx can do it's like put it if they put it in a flat $900 it will pressure a little bit the 4080 super because 4080 super is the same thing than the 4080 basically um there is no basically up least in terms of performance what it did it's basically lower the price from $1200 to $1000 um with the same performance the in terms of restoration the XTX uh it's around between an average between 5 to 8 percent better uh, than the 4080 super uh, in terms of ray tracing in some uh in terms of average it's way better uh but in some uh, specific cases they kind of trade blows in rtx uh, and ray tracing performance to a certain degree uh, but again nvidia has better uh upscaling uh technology there in terms of quality image uh, than the the amd and the 
the fake frame rate stuff. Uh, so it's basically a, a matter of uh, if you want to spend uh, around 10% more of money or uh, depending on if you focus to, or not on those technologies. But the fact that the XTX has 50% uh, more VRAM, I think in terms of longevity and especially in a product price on that uh, on that price there around one thousand dollars product that uh, it will have a little bit more longevity than the 4080 super for sure um i'm still satisfied uh, with the purchase that i did which is the 7900 xtx this one is from xfx the, uh, i have the, the link on my um, rig the specifications i got a link on uh, from the pc part picker the the, the, the model of the the gpu there um it does what it needs to do um and again uh and, and even i will not uh, dive in into another gpu I, I expect in the next two years or so i think that the, the performance will maintain relatively good for uh what I want to play in terms of gaming so that's it that's that um, but yeah uh, we might get uh, better prices maybe at MSRP uh, price point around April I think so give it a take two more uh, month because then we have the, 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 the I already start seeing some stuff regarding the, the AMD 8000 series GPUs the 5000 from Nvidia they're already talking about that for by the end of the year we still are in February there is a lot of stuff on the market at this moment in time that it's still worth uh, um, paying attention to. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. Hopefully it will decline. And But again, if you don't have any uh, issues regarding money, uh, people that want to buy, they, are, they continue to buy the, the, at this price point. Uh, continue with gaming. Uh, seems that PlayStation uh, might uh, change a little bit their tactics regarding first party games especially the, the ports that they will do for pc i think the, from i understood from the codes here um because of jim ryan yes the uh, ceo will uh, set retire next month uh, this was a message that they did that he delivered last year i think i, I, I don't remember uh, and at this moment the coo uh, is uh, is interim uh, chairman of and uh, of that Sony Entertainment, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment, got their names, um, and is there so for the transition, whatever. And basically, he he, he made a statement. A big problem of uh, Sony, uh, in, in, uh, sorry, Interactive <laughs> Entertainment, that it, that I found is they don't necessarily have a deep understanding of how their work is being translated to growth generation of sustainable profits and higher margins for the unit as a whole basically i think they are going to try and be more aggressive on the pc ports from their uh, first party uh, games uh, instead of two years between one year and a half and two years to make a pc port i think they're going to be more aggressive probably not as much as like the same day that it launches on the playstation uh, but it's more about uh, maybe six months. So uh, shorten, trying to shorten the time between the ports. Um, because um, if you take two years, again, within two years, even if you launch a PC, you have, for example, God of War, you've got Horizon, which is good. But for example, certain games that are uh, today uh, so, uh, seen as... Uh, um, uh, underperforming and to a certain degree underrated for example Days Gone seems to be a very good game uh, because it launched like two years after it came out from the PC uh, people didn't went too much on that game so these kind of games that basically are, are exclusives but they're not like huge uh, already established IPs basically Days Gone is a new IP um, yeah it didn't see a lot of sales so I, I think this is one of the things that is going to try to correct which is good for pc gaming and might as well be good for them also they can uh for, from each uh, unit uh, i suppose unit is like the game itself uh, can be uh, more profitable let's say uh, because then you don't have to put it that game on the pc port uh, as much uh, as a, a deal there so they can get that, that their money's worth from the development costs 
even though development costs is another thing entirely i think they need to tone down a little bit those budgets um but yeah to find a way to to reduce a little bit of those uh, production budgets there because it's getting way too expensive and i i saw some comments here especially for example hogwarts legacy uh, the fact that it's being ported to all kind of uh, even though it sold well but it's the fact that they're trying to port even for switch uh, shows that they are trying to squeeze out everything that they can so they can justify the production budget that they had which is was a, a little bit big but yeah um continuing we got dragon's dogma update dragon's dogma 2 sorry uh, it will feature um, uh, uncapped frame rates at least for PC. That's confirmed. At least for PC, it would have for sure, um, which is a good sign uh, because I think the from this with this engine or at least Capcom tends to release uh, capped frame rates, which is what it is uh, as long as the cap frame rates can be high. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's always better to if they if you have uh, uncapped frame rates especially on the PC version because you have uh, some machines that can handle better that uh, the fact that you are uh, even though I use cap frame rates for example in Jedi Fallen Order so I try to maintain a stable uh, 90 frames per second I might start do, trying to see if I can get a stable 60 frames without with less hiccups on the but I don't think it will work the vertical uh, stuttering usually it's about loading stuff in the background I don't think that, it will influence the fact that I'm going the cap frame rates there. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's going to have uncapped frame rates, it's pretty good because uh, it, it's something that is not basically capping the game at 60 frames or, or something like that because they, for sure there are machines. They will be able to ramp up that to 100 plus, uh, especially with the new technology of DLSS. It enables people to play with the more uh, high frame rates. I think it will be uh, it is a good decision if they start doing every uh, capcom doing all of those games especially on the uh to the moon engine which is the resident evil engine uh, i think it will it is a good choice if they uh, manage to to do that in all the upcoming games also and lastly i got a, a tidbit here from a trailer there was supposedly uh, this maximum entertainment 2024 roadmap broke through i didn't watch this uh, i just again i cut from uh, gematsu and this trailer uh, captivated me mainly because of the setting itself and supposedly the overarching story and the trailer itself uh, it seems pretty interesting uh, i don't know i will I, I put it on my wish list to keep an eye on and see how it goes basically it's a action adventure game set in a post-apocalyptic uh, whale worshipping fantasy lands so it's got this eerie kind of a thing there but uh, it's basically the story of old whatever it is casimir is starting his epic epic journey by boat and on foot in search of a ritual that can cure his soul wound that's very interesting um uh, a tagline of a, of a of a premise of a game if you have one um but the end yeah uh, the art style itself very very interesting uh, very similar to the dredge the game the dredge the art style itself um yeah I, i'm i'm interested uh, I will keep uh, on my wish list. Again, I will leave a link uh, below the the link of the, the I'm sorry, below the link of the article itself. I will leave the link of the Steam's page there. So if you want to wish list it and keep your tabs on, also um, I, I will leave it there. And yeah, in terms of news, it's what I got. Uh, we got some gaming deals. Liza Pi entered uh, on the deal uh, yesterday, I think, or today. 25% off um you got also some i think the deluxe edition has dlc stuff uh, no i don't think they have dlc uh planned i'm not sure i don't think they have dlc planned for for this game at this moment in time i'm not sure uh it's one of those that i w i want to try out also uh souls like kind of a thing more in vain of bloodborne in terms of combat more similar to that but uh, yeah pretty good game uh 25 percent off uh on, on on the game itself so i think it's a it's a, a very uh, very good game to, to try out i think they no I, th I, th I thought they had a demo but no they don't have uh we got uh still armored score six fires of rubicon 30 percent off again it's a rarity that bandai mamco uh puts their games uh, on sale especially from software games 
Uh, so it, it's a good uh, it's a good time if you want to jump in to at least take 30% off the of the the price of the game. Uh, we got Cyberpunk. It's still on offer. The Ultimate Edition is the recommended one because of Phantom Liberty. It's uh, almost by itself uh, a, a game. <laughs> uh, the DLC seems to be that good, and it's 33% off on the Ultimate Edition. Uh, got still Atomic Heart. Uh, I think the Premium Edition is the one that has all the DLCs there. So, but all the versions are 50% off. If you're not sure if it, it is a game for you, you got the demo here. To download if you want to try it out uh got red redemption red dead redemption 2 sorry 67 percent off on the base game and the ultimate edition is 50 uh, 65 percent off and lastly we got the witcher free wild hunt uh again the way to go it's complete edition 75 percent off to around 13 dollars or so uh again uh i always recommend first game playthrough especially on a heavy mod uh or a game that is very friendly to mods, I, I recommend the vanilla, uh, the vanilla, the vanilla experience for the first playthrough, and then uh, sub uh, the next one, uh, the next playthroughs to start tweaking with mods. I think it's the better way to go about it. Um, and then we got on GOG some uh, games also entered in the in the deal. We got Alien Isolation the collection, which got the DLC stuff um 75 percent off it's a pretty good deal a, a pretty good an excellent deal uh i played the game um this is a pretty good game i made a, a gameplay series very good graphics very good mechanics uh, uh the alien I, ai kind of a thing there that they tried off with this game can be uh is it or miss depending uh, can sometimes can be a little bit annoying because it doesn't seem to make a, a lot of logic sense on in terms of how the game proceeds but uh, it's something that uh, you you will you will uh, eventually will have to deal with but uh, yeah it's the only nitpick it's the uh, alien ai in some in some instances the rest it's pretty good the, the, the got solid mechanics uh the, the like the ambience there it's very similar to the first alien movie so it's got the let uh, retro futuristic kind of a thing there happening i think it's a good game uh we got the metro franchise bundle uh, on GOG again, uh, it's the Redux version of the first two games, plus Metro Exodus, uh, Exodus and all the DLC associated with those games. So around ten bucks, free games, uh, pretty good games. And if I uh, already bought them on Steam, I will eventually do a gameplay of this of this trilogy. I'm re really interested in, in diving deep here. Uh, we got War Tales, 25% uh, off. Again, this is like a turn-based um, strategy game. It's like a band of mercenaries. And then you go about, similar to Jag Alliance, that you go about and do some missions and then you have an overarching story there uh, to go through. But yeah, it's uh, very in line of kind of Jagged Alliance, uh, which is to a certain degree similar to XCOM in terms of combat. Uh, I always like this kind of games. Uh, you got also the uh, not the dredge it's only called dredge without the d it's 30 percent off the standard edition uh again uh overall a really positive game uh very lovecraftian in this ambiance and the storytelling there so uh, uh, it's one of those that I will eventually also play and lastly we got wasteland 3 uh, this is the colorado edition so it has all the dlc associated with that uh, at least a playable dlc here it doesn't have like the, the digital good is the only thing that it doesn't bring there uh, but yeah uh, I think I played a little bit Wasteland 2 director's cut I was doing a, a, a gameplay series then I got interrupted with that uh, again I have to uh, I moved out of the country so no PC to continue to do all of those stuff but I will eventually resume Wasteland 2 director's cut and then afterwards this is the sequel like the direct sequel if not mistaken, uh, on the Wasteland 3, I will I will do that. I, I always like this kind of games. And yeah, basically this is what I got for you today. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up with a plug on my Patreon. The Patreon is basically for extra support. At this moment in time, I'm focused of, on storage for me to be able to have backups of backups of stuff that I do for my clients and some extra space for the videos that I do for the channel. So at the moment, that that's my uh, main concern there. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Until then.
Nem, már szerelt. 